welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another one of those beginner style pastel painting tutorials. You guys seem to really like them, you request them a lot, so I'm back for another one. Now, I always leave a full materials list in the description box. Today I'm going to be using just a good old piece of Canson Mitant's um, pastel paper and I'm going to be using the Blick Artist Soft Pastels. This set that I'm using is a very limited set. It is the landscape set of 30 um, full sticks and if you guys are interested in more information about that, I did do a full review on the Blick Artist Soft Pastels on my channel already. I will link that up in the iCards and in the description box down below as well. But um, I did a review not only on this landscape set of 30 because I started with these and then I bought the full um, 180 wooden box set. So I really have a lot of experience with them and I gave a full review. So if you're interested, I'll link that up. If you happen to have like the Faber-Castell soft pastels, any student grade pastel you're gonna be working with is fine for this. You don't need anything fancy. And I think I'm just gonna jump right in and get started with today's tutorial. So, this is going to be, I'm fairly certain that this is maybe, I wanna say it's a hibiscus flower, but it might not be. I'm not super, um, up and up on my flower name. So if you guys know the name of this flower, let me know down below. Nope, no, no, nope. It's a uh, daylily. Daylily is the correct answer. But um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna start off with like a tear, all of the petals for this flower are essentially going to be a teardrop shape. I'm going in with a very warm, warm red. This is like a scarlet. And I'm gonna start putting in the petals. I'm going on the edge of this pastel in order to get more control. Now the Blick Artist Soft Pastels, they are a little bit softer than a Rembrandt, not quite as soft as a Sennelier. Certainly not as soft as Schmincke, but just a good, a really good texture. I really, really like these. So all these petals are gonna be essentially teardrop shaped, except for the ones that are a little bit foreshortened in the back. We have almost a squished out kind of heart shape for that one in the back. And I'm gonna use my warm kind of red here to fill in this edge on this first petal. That's actually gonna be a part of the petal that's curled up and under. And then I wanna take like a really dark purple to make a shadow where that would be casting a shadow just underneath. Now you could use black but that's not gonna look very pretty. Instead, I wanna use purple. And I'm gonna do, this is like, I think this one is like a lavender gray or something like that. It's a nice dark, dark plum color. And I'm gonna use that for the shadows on all of the petals. So here, there'd be a little shadow where this one is overlapping that would cast a little shadow. There's some shadow inside this petal, like that, and maybe a little bit there. Now going in with my dark first, my dark color first is really gonna help me to gauge and establish all my values. So I like to get my darks in first, and then I can really truly get a good idea of the rest of the painting. Now this one's way in the back and I think this one has the most shadow on it. And I'm not worried about anything being too precise here because this is a beginner tutorial, but also because I want this to be very free, very free, very expressive. I want this to be really fun and enjoyable to paint. And then this one has like a little curly bit of a petal, like the shadow underneath. 
because that petal's curling under. And where else do I see that? I see that over here. This might be a hibiscus flower, but I'm not 100% sure. You guys know I'm just terrible with flower parts and flower names. Uh, yep. Apparently, Nicole, again, it's a daylily. The correct answer is daylily. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I have a little bit of a bud, and I want to get some of the shadows in to that flower bud over here. There we go. And now, let's see, what could I use? I'm gonna use this shade, it's called Chestnut Red. It's kind of like a, a burnt red or a terra rosa kind of shade. I'm gonna use that one, this color, to sort of transition out of the purple. It's kind of like an Indian red kind of shade, if you're familiar with that color. Okay. I hope that you guys will enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, because it really helps out my channel and helps me to keep making these types of videos. And if you have any suggestions for what type of video that you would like to see next or what type of tutorial that you would like to see next, don't hesitate to leave that in the description box down below. Uh, in the comment section down below. No, the description box, that's my responsibility. Forgive me. All right. And then I'm going to go back to that original red and I'm just going to, I'm just going to fill most of this in. I'm not worrying about blending just yet. And if you have any dust, these Blick Artist Soft Pastels are not quite as dusty as, um, as the uh, Faber Castells or like those less expensive student grade pastels. These ones are really nice. But still, just be careful with your dust. Don't blow the dust, always tap it off. I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record if you've watched any of my other tutorials, but it's only because I care about you guys and I don't want you to be breathing um, toxic dust. It's not good, it's just not good. So this red is really orangey. There's nothing wrong with it. There's not another red in the set. All right, I just actually went and grabbed uh, a Rembrandt pastel here because there wasn't any cool kind of crimson reds in the set and I really did want some of that. I want the scarlet red in there too, but a little bit of this crimson is needed. So I'm adding some of that in. And that's really pretty. This one has that signature Rembrandt coating on it. It's a little bit waxy and a little bit difficult to deposit the color on a non-sanded surface. Um, so yeah, that can absolutely happen with these. If you run into that problem where you have an issue like that with one of your Rembrandts, just sand it off a little bit and it should work fine after that, but what's inside is good. But they do tend to have that coating on there. Ooh, that really is quite the coating. Come on, Rembrandt. Okay, I think we worked through it. Yeah, that's much better. So now it's depositing the color normally. But like, look how much of that I had to... It's fine, it's worth it. I'm just saying, oh no, we're back to dealing with it a little. Yeah, the Blick Artists pastels really don't have that, that Rembrandt issue. But I really do love the Rembrandt pastels. I don't want you guys to think I don't. But at the same time, I just wish I didn't have to deal with that coating sometimes on some of the newer ones. Let me see, can I get in here and... 
Ah, oh, that coating. Kind of ruining my moment. Oh well. So I hope everybody is doing well. Everybody's health is very good. I got a good blood pressure reading today myself and I'm very thankful and feeling very blessed about that. Let's see, let's add a little bit of that in there and a little bit into that bud there. Yeah, that is so shiny. Coating is deep with that one. Oh goodness. But once you get past the coating, the, the Rembrandts are really nice. All right, I'm just gonna use this color shaper tool to kind of blend some of those marks out a little bit. I'm not worrying about the dust too much at this point, but I just want to kind of start to blend some of those marks out. Alright, so I tapped the excess dust off um, into the trash can, and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of sharpen this up a little, redefine some of the edges. I'm going in with that original kind of scarlet color. Okay, we're going to bring back some of the edges. I want this petal to be out in front. And it's kind of difficult to do this um, on camera without sticking my head in there into the shot, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Um, but when you're at home, don't, don't be afraid to turn your work and, you know, do whatever you need to do to get in there. Now I really think that the color payoff on these Flick Artist Pastels are just so beautiful and so worth the extra money. They really are a really, I would call them like a economy professional um, pastel. That's really how I feel about it. I'm going to try and go in on the edge to get a highlight on that panel. And hopefully you can just see how much more vibrant the overall image is because we didn't use black. We used that that purpley color um, in the shadowed area is what I'm referring to. Now I'm going to take this really light kind of pink and I'm going to use that just a few little this a few little dashes to indicate some shine on these petals. If you push too hard in your beginning layers you might have a hard time getting this to stick um, in which case you can use a little bit of fixative to help you out there just a few little tiny dashes um, and then I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this yellow also and I'll use that too on some of them for some highlight on some of these petals. And I think that's a really pretty look to have both that kind of pink, cooler highlight and this warmer, kind of yellowy highlight. I think that's a pretty look. There we go. Mm hmm I like that and let me say I think I need a little more shadow right in here where else might I need a little bit more shadow maybe right in here I want to make sure that I have my values correct I want good strong values that's the backbone of good artwork Now you could go darker, um, absolutely, if you if you wanted to, than this dark purple. But I feel like it it has a tendency to make the flower look very dead, 
um, and as if it's just not so fresh anymore. So, uh, alrighty then. I think that's pretty good. And that bud down there over on the side, I'm not worrying as much about that. I want that to be pretty out of focus. I'm not worrying too much about any kind of detail on that because it's going to be way too far away for you to see any real detail on that one. I might add I might add a little bit more of this crimson to that. I'm having a hard time with this to be honest. This Rembrandt one is not depositing a lot of color right now because of that coating that's on it. I'm going to have to I'm definitely going to have to take uh, some sandpaper to that later. All right. Um, and then I'm going to take this yellow, the yellow that I had used in the highlighted areas originally, and I'm going to take and add some little stamens, some little lines that are going to come out from the flower. You don't want to overdo this. You don't need you don't need a lot of these. And just some little circles. Now, how much and or how little you decide to detail these is going to be completely personal preference and up to you. I think I might do just one more. And if you push too hard with your initial layers, you'll definitely have a hard time getting this to stick. So make sure that you don't do that. And I've got this kind of like Indian red shade that I had originally used in the flower and I'm going to use that to add a little bit of detailing. And also, also maybe a little of that plum. I'll just add just a tiny bit, like little dots. And a little bit of the red into that. But ultimately what I want is these to kind of stand out. All right, I'm gonna come in now and start working on the green part of the flower. So I'm gonna go in with like my lightest green and I'm just gonna start with this part of the petal that is kind of um, folded over. It's actually not the petal, this is the leaf, excuse me. And I'm gonna start working in with my greens here. And this is the part, in my opinion, that's gonna be like the most fun. So what I wanna do is I want a lot of really bold, expressive kind of marks and lines here. I'm gonna go in with the greens, a couple of the lighter greens maybe. I'm gonna go in even with some of this like Terra Rosa shade that I had used inside the flower. And I'm just going to enjoy this process of just making some really fun, expressive strokes. Using some of that uh, darkish plum, maybe even. Why not? And, and then I'm going to grab some darker, cooler green for like shadowed area. Oh, that broke and crumbled right there in front of me. Goodness. I 
don't think I have anything in this box that's going to be quite as dark as what I would like. Oh well. But overall I think you get my point. I want this to be just fun and quick and just expressive. Let's go in and do that, that same thing. We'll just we'll grab some of the shadowed areas in right away in some of these leaves. Same thing over here. And I want to bring this down like that. Bring some of the shadows in. But all these little leaves now that you want to do, you can get as creative as you want with these. And, you know, whatever colors that you've already used in the painting is fair game to throw into these leaves. So that's really fun. But these leaves, I think, are my favorite part because they're just... I feel like I could just express myself very well with them and I hope you guys feel that same way when you're doing it. Going with that same kind of Indian red shade, add some of that in. Make sure you get a lot of gesture, a lot of movement. Oh, that motorcycle in the background is very nice. <laughs> Just start throwing some of those shades in that you've already used. You can even put a tiny bit of the scarlet red in there if you want. Like, go ahead. There's no rules really here. And then I'm going to take some of the green. You could just don't make these lines straight get get that movement in there get that movement in there have fun with it and some of the blending will just happen when you start rolling the pastel over um, some of the colors that you've already laid down so some people really enjoy that. That's what I'm saying about you might not feel the need to come in with a blender and blend at all. You might just feel like you like the, the more of the raw strokes and that is totally fine too. I want to get a little bit of a shadow on that and then some highlight here to distinguish. What else can I throw in there? I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a, a little bit of that more of that Indian red in there. There we go. This is my lightest green and I want to make sure that I kind of get a nice highlight on the edge of that stem. Some highlights on the edge of this leaf and this one and that one. some of that in. Is 
Isn't that fun? I love that. It's really expressive and just fun. I love that. Yes, it's very pretty. Alright, so look at that. We are pretty much all done. And I get asked all the time, Nicole, can I paint with a very limited set of pastels? Do I need a lot of pastels to get started? Well, no, you don't. And yes, you can absolutely create beautiful pieces of artwork with just a very limited set of pastels. I think what I will do is come in and maybe add a few teeny tiny little highlights with the yellow in a couple places. I think that can be really pretty and it'll harmonize back to the um, to the flower because there's yellow in the flower. I don't want to overdo this though because if I do then it might make the foliage look like it's not so fresh anymore. So I just want to add maybe just a couple little yellow highlights to a few teeny tiny little places. But like I had mentioned earlier, like twisting my arm to get a different mark every time. If you feel like you've been getting a lot of those same kind of marks and you want more variation, just try twisting it. Try try getting that variation in that way. But I don't want to I don't want to overdo it because then I'll lose the effect. But I think that's pretty much it. Isn't that pretty? See how pretty that is? And it'll kind of tie back to the flower a little bit. Now I did kind of blend some of the marks out. I also left some of them more pure. That's my preference. I enjoy a variation of marks in my work, but it's personal preference and it is entirely up to you what you want to do on your piece. But that is pretty much it. Maybe I'll add just a tiny bit more of this pink for a highlight to a few more of these petals but honestly I don't think we even, hardly even need it I think it's good let's just see a little bit more highlight maybe in a few little places nah yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. So I am going to end there. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's easy beginner kind of loose painting tutorial. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos coming in the future. And leave me some suggestions for what other kinds of beginner pastel tutorials or watercolor, gouache, acrylic. I work in all the mediums, so just leave me a suggestion. I'll do my best to accommodate everyone. If you have any marks on your paper, I get this comment kind of a lot. I get this question of if I have smudges or fingerprints on my paper, what can I do? Try a kneaded gum eraser. You'll just, or even a soft vinyl eraser will pick it right up and you won't have that problem anymore. Now, if you are a beginner beginner, don't forget that when you're all finished to wash your hands thoroughly and um, make sure that you're practicing good studio habits. Don't blow the dust. Wash your hands before you eat, drink, smoke, or use the restroom because you don't want to be cross-contaminating um, or, or putting your health at risk. So I just wanted to make sure that I put that out there. And again, as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.